In this two part tutorial, we are going to learn about naive Bayes. In the first part, we'll cover some theory and then predict Titanic survival rate using naive Bayes. In the second one, we'll build email spam detector. And here is the list of topics along with the timeline. So if you want to skip to a specific topic, you can do that. Let's start with some basic probability theory. You all know that when you flip a coin, the probability of getting head or tail is one by two because there are two possible outcomes and the chance of getting head or tail is 50%. Similarly, when you pick a random card, the probability of that being a queen is how much? Just think about it. It's very simple. There are total four queens, 52 cards, hence the probability of getting queen is four by 52, which is one by 13. If you know that the card that you have picked is a diamond, then what's the probability of getting a queen? Well, this is called a conditional probability where you know that event A has occurred and then now you're try trying to predict the probability of B. So total diamonds are 13, queen is 1. We all know by just simple intuition that the probability here is 1 by 13, but this is how the conditional probability is represented where you say p of queen slash diamond where you know that event diamond has already occurred and the probability of getting a queen is something you are calculating. So that's called a conditional probability and the way that is represented is p of a slash b where event b has occurred already which is that you know that the card is a diamond and you're trying to find the probability of event A, which is whether the card is queen or not. Thomas Bayes gave this famous equation of finding a conditional probability where you can find probability of A given the event B has occurred by knowing some parameters, which is the individual probabilities of A and B and knowing the probability of B given that A has occurred. So let's look at it in the context of our queen and diamond problem. So here, this is the same equation I have represented for our specific use case. And you know these individual probabilities. And if you put them into our equation, you can easily find this conditional probability. Now, this is a very powerful theorem where you know probability of certain events, but you don't know the probability of some other events and using those certain events you can find uh, other probabilities. You all know about Titanic crash. There was a movie that was made and it was a super hit. But that event actually occurred and it was sad that so many people died. We have a data set of this Titanic crash where there are name of the people along with certain features which is your fare, ticket, cabin, etc. Based on that we are trying to find out the survival rate. And here we can use Bayes' theorem where we are trying to find the probability of survival based on the features such as if the person was male, the class, age, cabin, fare, and so on. The reason it's called naive Bayes is because we make a naive assumption that the features, which is male, class, age, cabin, and so on, are independent of each other. In reality, some of these features might be dependent, such as the fare is fare and cabin are kind of related, but we assume for simplicity purpose that these are not related. Hence, it is called naive Bayes, and it is a simple assumption which reduces our calculation and makes the algorithm simple yet effective. If you want to go in math a little bit, you can watch this video. This video is by Luis Serrano and he has really explained it well. I have a link of this video in the video description below. So go watch it. It's going to be very useful if you want to know the details. Naive base is used in email spam detection, hand rigid character recognition, the weather prediction, face detection and news article categorization. Now let's go straight into the coding. From the Kegel website, I have downloaded the Titanic dataset and it's available locally here in form of CSV. You can see all the passenger names, their features and whether they survived or not. I have downloaded these files locally. I have loaded the same CSV file into a pandas data frame in my Jupyter notebook 
Now we're going to do some data exploration first. We can see that some of the features are probably not relevant, so I'm just going to assume that they don't have an impact on my target variable. For example, name, right? Like name doesn't matter, like what was the name? It doesn't have an impact on the survival rate. Hence, I'm gonna drop those variables and make my data frame a little simpler. So I dropped all these variables and now I have this data frame. Now, one thing I noticed was uh, there is this target variable, which I want to separate out into a different series. So I will say target is equal to df dot survived and inputs, which is my dependent variables. For that variable, I will drop survived column and just put a rest of it. So this way I have my independent variables and dependent variables into two separate entities. We can see that the sex column is uh, text and we want to convert it into a dummy columns because we all know that the machine learning models can't handle text so we have to convert them into numbers and i have uh, one hot encoding or the dummies tutorial and there i have explained why it's needed but here that's what i'm going to do so the dummies will basically convert the sex column into two different columns and it will just put zero and one values. We're going to append these dummies columns to our inputs data frame. And the way you do that is by using the pandas concat function, where you uh, concat these two uh, data frames on columns. And when you check the data frame uh, which came as a result of concrete operation you will find that now i have these two columns okay now i need to also drop the original sex column because now i have dummy columns so i don't need that particular text column so now my data frame looks like this it is much simpler with all the numbers there is no text i also want to find out whether there are any any numbers in any of the columns and the way you do that is by using this when you run it it tells me the age column has some na values and i'm just curious to find out what what those values are so i'm just gonna print like the first 10 values and i find that some of these values are nan now i have a tutorial on how to handle nan values in pandas so you can refer to that but the popular approach here is you can take a mean of the entire column and then fill those NA values with the mean value. All right. And the way you do that is by doing this. You can say inputs.age.fillNA with the mean. And when you do that, let's print first five. The fifth one had, uh, I guess, the NA value. And you will see that it filled it with the mean value. I think fifth or the sixth. Okay, the sixth value had it. So you see that this was the mean value. I know 0.69 probably doesn't make much sense. So you can just uh, average it out. You can just make it like a whole number. But yeah. Uh, now we are going to use sklearns train test split method to split our data set into training and test sample. This is what we usually do before training our model so that the model is not biased when we are trying to calculate the score. And this is how you train test split. This is something we have done in all the tutorials. So this is pretty simple. There's no rocket science to it. I'm going to divide my test and training sample into 20, 80% ratio, all right? So when I do control enter, it's gonna divide it into train and test samples. I can just quickly check the length of X train and the X tray X test to see the distribution. So you can see that, uh, and the total is length of input. So the total was 891 and 80% of that is 712, 20% is 179. 
you can also print these individually if you are interested for example if you want to check what is your x train you can print like that all right now it's the time to create the naive base model now there are a couple of naive base classes we are going to use gaussian naive base uh, the gaussian naive base is something that you'll use when the your data distribution in no, is normal or it is like a gaussian distribution this is the concept in statistics you can learn about it it is also called a bell curve okay so we can use that model here okay so i have created that model and now it is time to train the model you all know that you have to call fit method whenever you want to train the model right and you train it on x train and y train and x train and y train is something that we got here so when you execute this it will train it now the training here is very fast because our samples are very less when you have so many samples it might take time and you have to use parallelization gpus and so on the first thing i do after my model is train is i always measure the score to find the accuracy and i found that it was 77 percent i know it's not very high but it actually depends on the the samples as well so if i run this again the score is going to vary so you can you can see it is now 78 percent now let's look at our x taste samples so x taste i will check the first 10 samples and i will see this is what it is i will also check my y taste sample to see what are their values so y taste is this oh this is probably not a good taste set okay let me just run it once more so when i do control enter it again creates some random samples and the score is a little better this time you can see there are a couple of ones here and you can now use model dot predict for our first 10, 10 samples and you can now compare that to y taste so you can see that it was 0 1 here it's 0 1 0 0 0 so 0 0 0 this sample it didn't get right you see it says it's 0 so our score is like 81 percent so it is expected it will make mistakes sometimes and and that's fine you can also use predict probability function to figure out what are the probabilities of each class like in 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 our case each class is whether a person survived or not survived when you run this uh, this sample says that 97 percent probability is it, the person didn't survive and this much probably probably that actually this much probability that person survived and this much probably that he didn't survive right that's why it makes a decision that it is zero in the second one the person survived it is one so that's why this probability is like 93 percent that's all i had for part one in part two we will cover email spam detection using naive base and we'll also have exercise at the end of that part two tutorial thank you